أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونؤمن به ونتوكل عليه ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا ما يهدي الله فلا مضل له وما يضلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن سيدنا محمدا عبده ورسوله أما بعد يقول الله تعالى في القرآن العظيم أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم ومن يتق الله يجعل له مخرجا ويرزق من حيث لا يحتسب صدق الله العظيم All praises of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala we glorify him and we give thanks to him for his blessings and favors upon us I testify that there is none to be worshipped but Allah. He is alone and he has no partner. And I testify that Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam is his servant and final messenger. <laughs> Ibad Allah, my dear brothers and my dear sisters, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reminds us in Al-Quran about comfort, happiness. Allah reminds us about uh, granting us or, or showing us the way. And, and He also reminds us about our sustenance. And we know the source of sustenance is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَلِلَّهِ مِرَاثُ السَّمَاوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضِ And to Allah belongs everything that is in the heavens and the earth. So everything comes from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reminds us that if we are to acquire this opening, if we were to be shown the, the path to success, if we were to be guaranteed our sustenance, then there is something that ought to be done. And so Allah says, And those who fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, those who are dutiful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, those who are pious, those who are righteous, those who enjoin right and they forbid evil, Allah says He will grant them openings. He, he will make things possible for them. He will show them the path towards success. And Allah will guarantee you your sustenance. He will sustain you from places that you never imagined and so my dear brothers and my dear sisters the month of Ramadan and its blessings the month of Ramadan and the things that are done during the month of Ramadan helps us to gain taqwa, to come closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It helps us to stay focused, to be people who are enjoining right and forbidding evil. Allah has given us a month in which we are required to fast 29 or 30 days 
And he tells us that there is a reason, there is a purpose behind our fasting. Ya ayyuhalladhina amanu, kutiba alaykumu siyamu kama kutiba ala alladhina min qablikum, la'allakum tattaqun. Allah says to the believers, O oh, you who believe, O oh, people of faith, fasting is prescribed to you as it was prescribed to those before you. And, and what is the purpose? لَعَلَّكُمْ تَتَّقُونَ So that you may be dutiful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So that you may be pious, achieve piety, so that you may become righteous, God-fearing people. My dear brothers and my dear sisters, this piety, this righteousness, it, it does not come from mere abstention of food and drink and marital relationship during the daytime in the month of Ramadan. But it comes from actions that are within us. And so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has placed on this month uh, it is a religious as well as a spiritual dimension many many people in the world today look at ramadan as more cultural yes it has a cultural background but what is more important it is it's its religious and its spiritual implication how much or what would we have acquired when we leave the month of Ramadan? What would be our... The, 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 the way we, we, we behave? How would we behave? Would we be the same as we entered Ramadan? Or there will be upliftment, there will be that strengthen our iman. If we are being told that iman yazid wa yanqus iman increases and it decreases. It increases with good deeds and it decreases with evil deeds. Would we be the same in terms of our relationship with people? who are less fortunate would there be strength in our compassion and our love and our kindness this is what the taqwa that is being emphasized so much in the month of ramadan that we acquire it through our fasting it is being acquired through our deeds, our actions. It is not just mere abstention from the food and drink and marital relationship, but it is the way we behave. And that's why Imam al-Ghazali, he, he, he tells us that uh, fasting is, is done in the right way when every limb of the body observes the fast and so the eyes are fasting and the ears and the tongue and the hands and the feet it's uh, with regards to morals and ethics Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he describes the people of taqwa, the God-fearing people, the righteous people in the Qur'an, when he says, Alif la meem, thalika al-kitabu la rayba fi hudal lil muttaqeen alladhina yu'minuna bil ghaib wa yuqimuna as-salaa wa mimma razaqnaahum yunfiqoon وَالَّذِينَ يُؤْمِنُونَ بِمَا أُنزِلَ إِلَيْكَ وَمَا أُنزِلَ مِنْ قَبْلِكَ وَبِالْآخِرَةِ هُمْ يُقِنُونَ 
Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us that in this book, this Quran, that we, we chant and we recite so much in the month of Ramadan, and we listen to in the month of Ramadan, he says, this Quran, it is hudan. It is, it is guidance for the muttaqun, the people who fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then he describes them. And so my dear brothers and my dear sisters, these are the qualities that ought to be within us, whether we are in Ramadan or out of Ramadan. Alladhina yu'minuna bil ghaib, those who believe in the unseen. It is every Muslim would tell you, I believe in Jannah and Jahannam, even though we cannot see it. We believe that there is a last day, a day of reckoning. We believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, even though we cannot see Him. But true belief, my dear brothers and my dear sisters, is when we work for the things that we believe in. And if we believe in Jannah, we need to strive for Jannah, we need to work for Jannah. That is why Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, when he said to his companions, Kullukum yadkhulul Jannah illa man aba. Every one of you will enter paradise except the one who refuses paradise. And the companions, they ask, Ya Rasulullah, wa man ya'ba? And who will refuse? And he said, Man ata'ani dakhla al-jannah wa man asani faqad aba. He who obeys me will enter paradise and he who disobeys me has indeed rejected paradise. And so Muslims need to check themselves in terms of, we, we, we don't want to go to hellfire. But there are so many people who do things that are taking them closer to the hellfire. Do we really believe? Are we really from the muttaqun? Is there strength in our taqwa? Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he told his companions, At taqwa ha huna, taqwa is in the heart. We, we, we need to have clean heart. We, we need to return to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as he says, Man atallah bi qalbin salim. He re, who returns to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with a pure heart, a clean heart. Our actions must be in accordance with the laws of Allah and the traditions of his Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. My dear brothers and my dear sisters, Ramadan is a month in which we observe our prayers so fervently for the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But the muttaqoon are people who establish prayers whether it is Ramadan or not Ramadan. That's how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala describes them in the Quran. Alladhina yuqimuna salah, those who establish prayers. Wa mimma razaqnahum yunfiqoon, and those who spend in the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And they do not withhold. Sometimes people can go hungry and people are starving and they are destitute and they are refugees throughout the year. And, and Muslims sometimes do not help. And only when Ramadan comes, we, we look because we want the blessings and then we help in the month of Ramadan. That's not taqwa. Muslims are people who help at all times, whether they are themselves in need. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He says in the Quran, that the, the, the muttaqoon, alladhina yunfiquna fi sarra wa dharra, those who spend in ease and in adversity, 
they are not only people who spend in the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala but the people of taqwa they spend whether things are easy for them or things are difficult for them and so whether it is Ramadan or not Ramadan there is that spiritual upliftment they, they look to, to better themselves and, and the muttaqoon Allah he says they are people who believe in that which was revealed to Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam my dear brothers and my dear sisters how much time is being spent in terms of internalizing the Quran during the month of Ramadan how much time is being spent in, in terms of looking at Surah Al-Ikhlas and Surah Al-Fatiha and, and Surah Al-Feel and say, let me learn about what Allah wants from me instead of just listening to it. We, we are living in a pop age and so Muslims associate everything about Islam to, towards that pop age. When we look at what we do in Ramadan, we bring, bring the best of reciters and we compete. And, and, and sometimes we are publicizing it and says, how was our reciter? And you want to know how your reciter was in compared to another Qari in another masjid. And, and it, it's all about uh, competition. Sometimes people are doing dhikr and they're reciting Quran and they're, they're listening to talks and it doesn't have any impact because they don't understand. They don't understand the Quran. They don't even understand the dhikr that you are doing. It must have an impact. It must make a difference. That's what makes us muttaqoon. And so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He says, the muttaqoon are people who believe in that which was revealed to Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. How would we really believe in it, my dear brothers and my dear sisters, if we don't understand it? If we are just listening, MashaAllah for listening, MashaAllah for reciting. But the emphasis needs to be placed on understanding the Quran. How, how can you treat your mother or father in a very dishonorable manner? How can you backbite and slander your brother or sister if you really understood and believe in the Quran? How can you treat your neighbors, they're dying of hunger and you're filling your stomach if you really understood and believe in the Quran? Because this is what the Quran teaches us. And so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying the muttaqoon are people who believe in it. You're not just listening to it, you're not just, you know, reading its pages. But you put into practice that's what in the pages of the Quran. My dear brothers and my dear sisters, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he continues and he says, the muttaqoon are people who believe in that which was revealed before. And the muttaqoon are those who believe or they have the assurance of the hereafter. It, it, it is sometime only when people die, then we think about that. That yes, we have to go one day. But if we think about death every day of our lives, then there will be a difference in our lives because we know for a surety that we will be going. When? Only Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows. Under what conditions? Only Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows. And so if we think about it constantly, that there is a day, there is a day of reckoning, there is a day when we will stand in front of our Lord, 
that what these angels record on our shoulders, Kiram and Cantabin, the, the writers of good and bad deeds, that is indeed the truth, and we will be shown it on that day. That's true demonstration of our taqwa, that we really have that piety, that righteousness. My dear brothers and my dear sisters, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He tells us in the Quran about some other qualities of the muttaqun, and He says, وَالْكَاذِمِينَ الْغَيْفِ وَالْعَافِينَ عَنِ النَّاسِ وَاللَّهُ يُحِبُّ الْمُحْسِنِينَ In those who control their anger, those who are forgiving, those who are engaged always in the doing of good. How often we get angry with our immediates, our family, our friends, our community. And sometimes we isolate ourselves. We, we talk a lot about forgiveness. This is the month of forgiveness. And all of us, we pray that Allah forgives us for our mistakes. But my dear brothers and my dear sisters, we need to own up to our mistakes. When we have wronged people, we need to ask them for forgiveness also. It is not just looking at Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to forgive us. But we need to make a difference in terms of our brothers and sisters whom we have wronged. I am sorry, brother. I am sorry, sister, for the wrong that I have done to you. Take the model of our Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He used to ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for forgiveness 100 times daily. He was promised forgiveness for everything that he may have done wrong in the past and what he would do in the future. And yet he used to ask Allah 100 times daily. Whenever his companions, they said something and he felt that he might have... Uh, in the way he spoke or in the way he did things that it might have caused some discomfort to them the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam was the very first one to apologize those are qualities of the muttaqun my dear brothers and my dear sisters it is not acquired just by abstaining from food and drink and marital relationship during the daytime in the month of Ramadan. It is through our actions. It is through everything that we do. My dear brothers and my dear sisters, Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he encouraged his companions he motivated them to always or to constantly be engaged in righteous deeds. He continuously motivated them to shun all forbidden acts. And so we want to emerge from Ramadan in that state in which we are constantly striving for the achievement of good deeds and we are shunning everything that is abhorrable and everything that is against the traditions or the commands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We want to leave Ramadan not the same. Because Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, the one who is deprived 
of the blessings of Ramadan is really deprived of tremendous virtues. My dear brothers and my dear sisters, we need to set a new benchmark. Benchmarks with regards to our spiritual upliftment. Let us not make this Ramadan all about quantity. But let us look at this Ramadan with regards, with regards to quality. If you can only read a few portions of the Quran and you can understand it and you can share it and you can implement it, perhaps it would be better than reciting the entire Quran and you don't make any difference in your lives. If you can only do a certain amount of rakat per night and you do it with sincerity and it's not a rush rush thing you do it for the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala perhaps it will be better than standing the entire night because Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam he reminds us that many people will fast during the day and they will get nothing from their fasting except hunger and thirst. And many people will stand for long hours at night and they will get nothing from it except sleeplessness. We don't want to be in that state, my dear brothers and my dear sisters. So let us set new benchmarks that this is what we want to acquire out of the month of Ramadan. What we really need to exit Ramadan with is character. What we really need to exit Ramadan with is better behavior. Reputation, my dear brothers and my dear sisters, it, it, it can be had in just a moment. But character, it takes a lifetime to be built. Reputation is what you lead people to believe that you really are. But character, it is really what you are. And so many people will leave Ramadan having built a, a reputation for themselves that we have had hundreds of people attending our masajid we have had the best of Quran we prepare the best meals for iftar and we were the best in this and the best in that that reputation will only be for a moment. Help to build the character of people. Help to make sure, ensure that they make a difference in their lives. That will be lasting. And that's how we need to exit Ramadan, my dear brothers and my dear sisters. This is what this month is all about. Don't lose the real reason or the real purpose behind Ramadan. It's all about making us remain focused, increasing our piety, our taqwa, our God-fearingness. 
elevating ourselves, looking out for ourselves in terms of our spirituality, and looking out for our brothers and sisters with regards to our love and compassion and kindness towards them. We pray that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us the real rewards of the month of Ramadan. We pray that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala increase our taqwa and that he strengthens our iman. We pray that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives us good in this life and good in the life hereafter and that he saves us from the torment of hellfire. أقول قولي هذا واستغفر الله لي ولكم ولسائر المؤمن المؤمنات من كل ذنب فاستغفرون إنه هو الغفور الرحيم. الحمد لله الحمد لله رب العالمين. والصلاة والسلام على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين رضوان الله عليهم إلى يوم الدين أما بعد my dear brothers and my dear sisters we are being reminded إن الله لا ينظر إلى أجسامكم ولا إلى سواركم ولكن ينظر إلى قلوبكم وعمالكم. Verily, Allah Subhanahu wa Taala does not look at your bodies. He does not look at your appearances, your outward appearances. But Allah Subhanahu wa Taala looks at your hearts, and He looks at your deeds. We are living in a world, my dear brothers and my dear sisters, in which. There are many obstacles, many thorns that sometimes cause us to deviate. The scholars, our predecessors, they, they describe taqwa as such that you see obstacles, you see turns in your pathway, and so you apply yourselves and you tread cautiously so that you do not get caught up with these obstacles and these turns. There are many ways in which you can sin, and so we need to be very cautious we, we need to remove these obstacles from our pathways and make sure that we, we are striving to stay closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We pray that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala He grants us a Ramadan that is very rewarding. And we pray that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala multiplies our good deeds during this blessed month manifold. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to also forgive us for our shortcomings, our mistakes. And we pray that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us to stay focused on the right path. لقد أمرنا الله سبحانه وتعالى في القرآن العظيم حيث قال إن الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم صل وسلم على عبدك ورسولك محمد وأرضى الله من خلفائه على رباه أبي بكر وأمر وأثمان وعليم ونستة الباقين المبشرين بالجنة ونسائر الصحابة ونتابعين ومن تبعهم بالسان لا يوم الدين اللهم عز إسلام والمسلمين 
اللهم نور قلوبنا بنور الإيمان وثبت قلوبنا على دين الإسلام ولا تجعل في قلوبنا غلا للذين آمنوا ربنا إنك رؤوف رحيم عباد الله إن الله يمر بالعدل والإحسان وإيتاء ذي القربة وينهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر والبغي ذكم لكم تذكرون فاذكروا الله لا نعمهم واشكروه على آلائه ولا ذكر الله أكبر والله يعلم ما تسنون أقم الصلاة بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والعصر إن الإنسان لفي خسر إلا الذين آمنوا وعملوا الصالحات وتواصوا بالحق وتواصوا بالصبر